Good afternoon, bonjour. Nothing ravages human dignity more than having to drink contaminated water and defecate in the open. Nothing destroys the health and well-being of our people more than the absence of safe water and sanitation. Over 600 million Indians defecate in the open every day, and more than 30% of our villages have no access to safe drinking water. Even as I speak, although manual scavenging is officially banned in India, more than 1.2 million men and women carry night soil on their head every day. Night soil is a euphemism for human shit. A social toxic virus has infested Indian society to the extent that it is only the lowest caste, the Dalits as they're called, who handle human waste and clean our toilets. The upper castes find the act of cleaning toilets and handling human waste as one of the greatest pollutants. Ironically, those who handle human waste and clean our toilets are also treated as subhuman beings. I remember moderating a session earlier this year at the world-renowned Jaipur Literature Festival on Swachh Bharat, or the Clean India Mission, as it's known. One of the panelists was a gentleman called Deshraj Kali. He's a very well-known Punjabi poet who's a Dalit whose family comes from a lineage of sewage workers. I remember him narrating a story of a retired government sewage worker who was an expert in unblocking sewage pipes. One day, the city in which he lived faced a major crisis as the water supply of the city was being contaminated by the human waste that was entering the pipelines. The officials made a beeline to his house and requested him to help them unblock these pipes. He readily agreed and he went into these sewage pipelines with no protective gear. No masks, no gumboots, no, uh, no any kind of support system, as none of this has ever been made available to any of our sewage workers. As he stood there in the midst of all this muck and grime, his entire life, all the trials and tribulations that he and his family had to encounter flashed before him. He was unable to unblock the sewage pipes. But as he was waiting there, all the deep resentment that he had, which he had bottled up inside, gave him the strength to unblock the pipes. The average lifespan of an Indian today is 70 years. But the average lifespan of the sewage workers is only 45 years. Every government in India in the recent past have launched very ambitious and aggressive campaigns to build toilets both in schools and in villages. But the toilets largely remain unused and open defecation still rampant. What we need is holistic planning, one which factors in the caste system, one which accepts that water and sanitation go hand in hand and that one without another is not an option. It was at this time that my NGO designed an integrated drinking water and sanitation solution, what we called Sana Surya Sujaladhara Mariu Harita Bio Toilets. It was this model that won us the Google Impact Challenge and a grant of half a million dollars. Using this model, we are now working in 20 villages and 12 all-girls schools in the remote tribal areas of Andhra Pradesh. What we do is we set up a solar-powered water treatment station in every site, which produces over 1.8 million liters of clean drinking water. And we use the wastewater for flushing and washing in community bio-toilets. A bio-toilet doesn't need a septic tank or a secondary waste disposal system, making it an ideal solution for a country like India, because there's absolutely no human intervention that is required. Every site we work with the, with the beneficiaries, we make them stakeholders in the project. They contribute the land in the building where we house the water station and we set up the bio toilets. We partner with the end users and make them part of the solution and not the problem. 
But technology is just one part of what we do, because at the end of the day, you can have all the infrastructure available, but then if people don't come out and use the toilets, then you're just creating white elephants all over the place, which really will not solve anything. We back this with an aggressive, motivational, and capacity-building workshop modules that we have designed, keeping in mind the local sensibilities so that they work on the ground. We start with what is called training the trainers, where we work with the local healthcare workers and the community leaders and talk to them about the importance of using toilets, about basic hygiene, and how this is beneficial for them and their families. We take this message forward because the trainers reinforce this message at regular intervals because one-off messaging never works. At the end of the day, what we need is behavioral change, not just attitudinal change, and that is possible only when we reinforce messages at regular intervals. So we have the trainers at work. You can see some of the community workers. We work largely with the women in the villages because we feel that they are the most vulnerable. And when you work with women and when you change their mindsets, you're empowering families. But at the end of the day, all this sounds perfect in papers and in conferences and making PowerPoint presentations. But we need a reality check to know whether what we have on paper actually works on the ground. So we follow it by what we call audit and assess, which gives us a reality check every quarter. So we know if we're going in the right direction, is there a mid-course correction that we need? We work with people from within the community to train them to learn to operate and manage the entire system. And we also hand over ownership of the entire project back to the community. We set up a water community, which is empowered to sell the water at a nominal cost ensuring that there is a revenue stream so that projects like this become sustainable. At the back, the image that you see is Lakshmi. She is a 30-year-old mother of three who's the operator in one of our sites in Bodhuvalsa. It is through initiatives like this when women are empowered that families get empowered because she gets an additional income which supplements her family's requirements. When <clears throat> But at the end of the day, we back this with our communication modules that we have designed. The reason why I'm laying out all this in such great detail is because I believe that if sustainable development goals are to be achieved, they have to be embedded in the local socioeconomic reality of the geography where one functions. It had, all communication must be aspirational and motivational. In India, we have more mobile phones than we have toilets. Uh, people have, whether they're in the tribal area, whether they're in the big city, everybody wants and dreams of a better life. And so all communication has to factor this in, otherwise we are often preaching just to the converted. We also need mainstream media to partner with us. You know, a success of a nation is not judged only on the basis of GDP. It is not my argument that GDP isn't important, but only that HDI, or the Human Development Index, is equally important if we are to progress as a country and as a world. We need to encourage technical innovations as social interventions. In Delhi, along with the Delhi Water Board, we have converted raw sewage into safe drinking water. Not only does this ensure that you're treating human waste and sewage, but also that you are providing safe drinking water, which is an essential component to healthy and safe living. I believe that we have to have interpersonal communication, which is embedded in the local realities of every area that we work. Even in India, what works for me in Vishakapatnam in the tribal areas need not work in any other place. I believe that technology can be used to transform lives, and nothing more, nothing, nothing else will really work other than ensuring that we have communication which is backed by a technological ecosystem, because communication in the absence of infrastructure on the ground doesn't really result in behavioral change. They say that it takes a village to raise a child. 
I say it will need an out-of-the-box communication module with direct interpersonal intervention if we are to reach our sustainable development goals. Thank you.